so yeah, this talk is to somehow attempt to um, start where Kenley has finished on Wednesday. We have Kenley here. He was trying to recruit you guys for, for the design team and for UI hacking. So today I'm going to show you how to actually hack the UI. Uh, this talk is somehow primarily targeted uh, at the new user interface, but not necessarily new hackers, and also at the core hackers that have somehow little experience with the UI hacking. And I should perhaps say something why did I decide to, to come up with this talk. Uh, we have a lot of UI easy hacks and it's somehow considered like in general easy hacking. So almost everyone can do that, but I've seen somehow lots of people actually somehow it was like this cargo pulled programming, like everybody is just like taking some bits from here and there, copy pasting them around without understanding what they're actually doing. And it's not surprising because like documentation is there's some readme here and there's some wiki there and somehow incomplete and scattered over various places. So I somehow try to put this all together in this very talk. So here's some outline what, what, what I will show and what we will learn if, in case you don't know it yet. Uh, we will learn how to how to add a new you know, command to somehow execute some or do some work around the user interface how to add a toolbar and sidebar button or menu entry doing that with an icon because it's somehow boring and not so fancy without pictures. Uh, we'll learn to define the, the new slot and its interface and connect those two together. I'm intentionally not covering the, the widget layout, the UI files, because it has been extensively covered elsewhere and it's well documented and there's been several GSOC projects about that. So I assume everybody knows it by heart. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so what's the what's the you know command? That's some basic building block of the LibreOffice command dispatch API. Maybe if you've seen that, that's the that's the form the command usually has. Is there some laser pointer perhaps somewhere? It used to be on Friday, maybe it's not anymore, never mind. Uh, it usually has this one. I have a typo in my slide. There should be some. Um, there should be a colon after you know. So it's dot you know colon and command name. Uh, the configuration file for you know commands live in this directory. Office config registry, etc. And there are global commands that are somehow like universal for all the applications. And there are also commands that can be local to a particular application like writer or whatever, draw it, press. This is where they live. And here's some examples, some snippet of XML file, how such you know command looks. I have highlighted the name you know here is correct with the semicolon. I highlighted that in red, that's the command actually, command itself. Uh, additionally, you can define a tooltip text for a command, which is useful for the, for the sidebar or for the toolbar buttons. And you can define some additional flags. I originally intended to somehow only quickly fly over those flags, because if you put one here, it means the command has an icon. If there's a zero, it means it has no icon. And all the additional flags somehow seem a little important to me, but do we have Leo here? No, um, we don't. But uh, somehow, I was I was not aware of some some differences because I I <laughs> yes there he is. Uh, so so this flag is will be probably important for you if you, if you write RTL or if you write vertical text because here you can define that your icon is supposed to be mirrored, for example, or it's supposed to be rotated vertically. Um, yes, so once we have a command, we need some entry point, something the user can hit enter over or click with the mouse on, and that's a UI element. It can be a toolbar button or a sidebar button 
or some menu entry or some context menu entry, but I'm not going to talk about context menus because uh, somehow discouraged to add new context menus. Toolbars. Uh, toolbar configuration is an XML file again. Uh, it lives usually like for for app, you should substitute SD, SW, SD, help, impress, draw, math. And there are several independent XML files in this directory for several different toolbars. And here's again a snippet of such an XML file defining one toolbar menu entry. Uh, here we can see the the command actually associated with this with this toolbar button and some additional attributes. You can define if the, if the toolbar button is visible by default or if it's hidden. You can associate a help ID with it and you can also define what kind of toolbar button it is. If it's a split button or a normal button or a toggle. Sidebars. Sidebars are thanks to Candy and his GSOC student from some two years ago, uh, UI based, so it's very similar to Divox. Uh, they also live in this UI config directory in SPX if there are somehow universal common to all apps or in the app specific directory SD, SW again. And I somehow tried to, oh, the, so the XML snippet is supposed to be much larger, but I made it smaller so that it fits the slide. And also, thanks to, thanks to a feature can be implemented, we can already directly associate the you know command, which you can see highlighted in red over there again. We can associate it directly with the, with the sidebar button in the UI file. Uh, previously, it was done in some very clumsy way in the C++ code. And you can also edit it in Glade. Uh, menus are perhaps the most straightforward. So there's only one XML file with the menu configuration for, for the application. It looks like this, and this is, this is perhaps looks familiar because this is file of the menu among to all apps. And again, the you know commands are, are highlighted over there in red. So, um, every, every toolbar button, every sidebar button, some menu entries as well can have associated icon. Unfortunately, it's not somehow possible for, for, the, for the XML scheme to define a custom name for the, or custom path to the icon. So, so the icons have to live in a, in a fixed path and have to have specific names. And the path is mentioned over there is the icon themes. If you're adding a new icon, you absolutely have to add it to the Galaxy theme, uh, optionally also to the other themes, and it has to, as I said, it has to have a specific name. So if I have a command, you know, do something, my icon has to be named uh, S underscore or L L C underscore, the, the command name in small letters, like without capitals, and it has to be in PNG format. Uh, Yes, so uh, if, you, if you don't want to have a new icon, want to use the, reuse the existing icon, it's possible as well. Uh, in every theme, icon theme directory, there's a simple text file called links.txt, which somehow defines links uh, between, between the different icons. So you add a new line, which has this form. The first entry is the, is the new icon for your command. And the second entry is the existing icon, which is going to be recycled. Yes? Uh, what's the difference between the SC and LC icon? Uh, some color quality okay. or resolution. So I don't know exactly. So, so it's in sizes. It's more and more. Oh, thank you. So, to let application know about our UI element, still some steps are necessary. Not for sidebars, because this works somehow out of the box. But the toolbar buttons need to be registered. If you want to register a toolbar button, 
have to find the C++ file, C++ um, object, which is, which is called SW or SC DLL. And you have to append like that there's some method that registers all, all controllers, all toolbar buttons for this application, and you have to append the your button there. And for a dialog, if if the if the button, new button is going to open a dialog, it would have to be registered as well, and they have to be added to one of the existing dialog factories that also also live in the application. It's called DLG fact usually. So the static part is over. If if you want to roll this text, you will you will see your bar button or your sidebar button now in the application. But if you click on it, it will do nothing so far. Uh, so we somehow need to connect the actual C function doing the heavy lifting. Opening a dialog or opening the drop down, doing something, changing properties, well, simply doing the dynamic stuff with the with the UI element we've just added. And for that, we we use the slots. You can well, that's some some Enigma blackboard. I somehow use this as, as an illustration. Uh, you can imagine it as a blackboard that connects the UI elements, the you know commands that are associated with them, with the actual functionality. And there are two types of slots, as I said, like one is a method slot that, for example, opens a dialog, and the second one is a state slot which changes the state of an object, so you can imagine, for example, it changes the line, changes the color of a line, or changes the size of the font. And slots live in the... Oh, First, slots need the ID. Um, they usually like you, you usually have to find some some HRC file in the in the root directory of your application, or in the somewhere in the global includes if it's going to be used by more application, and associate the slot ID, which usually has this form SID underscore something, with some numerical ID. Something to watch out for is that like those those HRC files where the slot ID are defined are somehow like they include not not each other but like but they can be included and sometimes it can happen and there have been bugs and there have been regressions that there were somehow like duplicates. You somebody added a slot ID uh, thinking it does something useful, but the same slot ID was actually defined in the included file and some other functionality suddenly ceased to work. So for example, I, I think I, I've added some, some slot ID for changing the background of the text and then somebody filed the bug that one can't include a picture in the document anymore because it's simply mapped to the same slot ID. And, wow. Well, okay, I missed one slide. Anyway. Uh, slots the definitions live in files that have, a, that have an ending SDI, like strategic defense initiative, but it's something else, and they usually look like this. So this is an example of the of the property of the state slot. This slot uh, simply changes the color of the form, and you can see this this color. That's that's our you know command in disguise, and. It simply maps this you know command to the slot ID we've just defined. And there's lots of lots of those slot flags, half of them are obsolete, but they're still copy pasted around anyway. Uh, I will the last slide will cont contain some link to a documentation that defines like what the, those flags exactly mean. But what's interesting is for example those those configuration flags down here. Because for example you have to set the toolbox config to true if this is going to be a toolbar button. And this is a method slot, so it does not change state, it actually does some other work, usually it opens a dialog. And yeah, the basic difference between the, the property slots and the method slots are those brackets over there. They should be on a separate line, but otherwise it wouldn't wouldn't fit the slide, so so I I put it nicely. 
that's where um, some arguments come to. This slot, it's again like, uh, you know, a poem about command in disguise, which maps to the SID underscore about slot, and this is its return value, and as we can see, um, this particular one is a menu entry, because this menu config is set to true and everything else is set to false. So that would be it, and now we have to add this interface to the slot. So actually connect connect our slot to some existing C++ function that is actually doing something. Uh, as it would be somehow, I don't know, annoying and tedious for every module, every application, write those huge arrays of C++ functions, it's not going to it's, it's not done like that, so we have some SP IDL compiler, which I was kind of, I don't know, um, slightly scared to investigate in detail. But <laughs> it goes through all those SDI, STI files and transforms them into, into actual array of function pointers. And here's how a slot inf interface looks like uh, for a slot, for, for this particular slot. It has execute method and it has a state method. So somewhere, somewhere in the in the local implementation or a local subclass of the of, of a shell of this SFX shell, usually um, this is the this drvsh whatever uh, it it maps to some um, so, so so there will there will be some some C plus plus file with a similar name that actually implements those functions and the functions have those signatures and they usually contain some, some long list of switch case statement for, for different slots so if you're adding a new functionality you can, you can just plug your functionality into the, into the existing methods and or define a new one but I'm not covering that here and some further reading. There's some very very good um, article on old OpenOffice Wiki on the slots and interfaces. Fairly good article on the UI configuration. Somebody I don't know who that was. It's kind of unrecognizable from the nickname. Wrote a simple tutorial how to add a, some Hello World dialog to impress. It lives in LibreOffice Wiki. And we also have a very good wiki, as I, as I mentioned, for, for, the, for the UI format and for all the Glade bits. Happy hacking! <laughs> uh, if you have further questions, if you want to start with UI hacking, just don't hesitate and come to come to design channel. And I do we have more, but yeah. Uh, I promised to him to somehow pass this documentation to him so it doesn't have to be embarrassingly on, only on OpenOffice Wiki anymore, but you can have it as well. Thanks. Any questions? Yes? It was mentioned in the um, earlier design talk that uh, as far as I understood, the new default fallback is Breeze and not Galaxy. Was it a misunderstanding? Really? Oops. So <laughs> I think that it is not that default fallback, but default uh, on OS X. So by default, default uh, item theme on OS X is Breeze because it fits better than this general OS X UI. Or at least okay, uh, so it was told so by many, uh, many as a developer, if you add a new item to a single team, that should be still our Galaxy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it has, to be, well, it has uh, to be in the Galaxy. It, it can be, be in the other themes. It would be, it would be better if it was Tango. <coughs> um, like, Tango would be a better fallback than Galaxy because... Yeah, Galaxy somebody has to fix the readme. <laughs> the, the, Galaxy, the Galaxy actually has a, uh, has a big bigger icons than the other themes, so, so going back to the Galaxy is... Not a good idea in general. But we are hoping that it could be back on getting in the whole thing that we can provide a package in the 
Like, uh, falling back to, to the breeze, uh, uh, wouldn't be that good idea because uh, like breeze looks really different uh, compared to the other spread teams, so, so it wouldn't work that well. On the other hand, breeze is now the most complete eye concept that we have. So. Choose your poison. I thought it, if it won't be added to Galaxy, it won't be found at all. If I just take the icon and add it to Breeze, it won't be found. But maybe I'm wrong. Yes? If we need to uh, add a text box or drop down box, and we be followed this way, then we need to add new slots. Text box where? Yes, so you, you have to you have to follow follow those steps and uh, so somehow um, then subclass uh, a toolbox and implement the functionality 